One time I bought a painting from uh, one artist. And I said, you sign here that you are also selling me the copyright. And he said to me, but I've sold you the painting. I said, yes. It does not mean that you've given me copyright in this work. Because if today I get this painting and I become Governor Bank of Uganda and say the next North should have this painting, you will come and sue me for copyright infringement and I will have to pay you. You heard of that case of the person who sued Bank of Uganda for that sculpture? Yes. So just because something is out there in the public does not mean that it's free from copyright. You must get authorization. Whether you take a picture, if you take a picture of a painting on a wall, you are creating another work out of an original work. And that photograph, for you to use it legally, you must get authorization from the person who made that painting. Even if he sold it to URSB, even if he sold it to the hotel, you must get clearance because what you are doing is creating another what is called a derivative work out of his work, which is his right, not yours, who is taking the picture. Okay? So just because things are out there on the internet, you find books, you just download and distribute on your groups. You find photographs from a newspaper, you clip it and use it uh, in whatever. No, you have to get clearances. And if you can't find, you go to a CMO. If you are getting the um, a photograph. Go to Mr. Watamze here and say I need a license to use photographs. Or him, he'll collect the money and look for the owner and say, I'm going to transmit this money to maybe Kenya, where this photographer is from, and send it to the CMO in Kenya that you don't get sued by the owner who comes from Kenya. So get clearances. Go to the CMOs and pay for licenses to use this content. Don't merely assume that just because it's out there. Whether it be soaps, whether it be uh, photographs, whether it be articles, whatever. Get a license from a collecting society. Okay? The other issue maybe I wanted to um, highlight is about artists who give their content to your stations and you start playing this content and then you get, for example, your peer is coming and saying, you pay me money for this music. Now, all of us know that when you go to down here, you and there, and they have the, the exhibition, you find people there giving you free samples of their products. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. So if I'm an artist, I have a responsibility to promote myself. So if I know that you have a show that is popular, I can come and encourage you to promote me. That people know about me. But that does not mean that I have transferred the copyright to my work to you or your station. No, I still maintain the copyright. In other words, I'm the one who's going to authorize broadcasting so when a CMO comes and says pay, they are correct. As long as you are still playing my content, you need to pay. Now, if you want the CMO not to bother you, ensure when they give you this content, you have a contract here stipulating how this content is going to be used. That one, you are giving us as a radio station, the license to broadcast your content for consideration of 100 shillings. And that contract must be in writing. The law requires it should be in writing. You, don't, you should not just agree with the guy in the corridors of your station. Write it down. And that doesn't have to be a complicated thing. Like the way I'm saying it, agree. Otherwise, the CMO will come and say, pay. And you don't say, oh, they came and gave it to me for free. Yes, giving you the work does not transfer copyright in that work to you or to your station. Pay or have a contract stipulating how you use that content. 
The other aspect I um, wanted to touch on is um, fair use. I know when, whenever people are using uh, content and you tell them to pay, they say, oh, this is fair use. I mean, I just using it fairly, you know? That's how they view fair use. And uh, someone asked the question that, what are the boundaries? And he has given you some of the boundaries. He actually even set out in the law here. For you to claim fair use, the use must be special. Either it is uh, stipulated in the law, or is envisaged within the context of what law considers a special circumstance. Okay, so the circumstances which you are using the content must be uh, special. If you get my article from an online page and you just publish it in your newspaper, you can say, oh, since it's important for people to know about IP, getting his article, we felt was fair. It's not, because that's, a, that's not a special circumstance. And it's not unreasonably prejudice the rights of the owner of that work. Okay. Now these are technical arguments, and usually what is fair is actually even a sliding scale. They will say, for example, do not make ten pages of a book in one case, and in another they say just making one copy or one page of a book will not will be infringing. In another they will say you need to do more because fair use is an issue of fact. What? or how God sees the usage will. One, it is special. Two, it is prejudicing the owner of the, of the, of the work, and uh, it's unreasonably uh, affecting his benefit from his content. It's a sliding scale. But don't use that as an excuse to infringe someone's content, especially if you are going to use it, use it commercially on your broadcasting station. Yes, get clearances. Finally, as a broadcasting or as a media organization, you also can be a copyright owner. Some of you are producing shows, some of you are generating uh, newspaper articles. How many of you are writing articles for newspapers, for example, here? Yeah. Any of you who write articles? Yes. Do you own uh, your articles? Which, which, which organization do you work with? The what? Daily Monitor. Daily Monitor. So, as an example, he's a writer. He's, uh, do they call them writers? Yes. He's a writer in uh, Daily Monitor. Now, Daily Monitor most likely has a contract with him that he's an employee. So, so that means the one who owns copyright in what he writes is Daily Monitor. The Daily Monitor also, also has interest in ensuring there's compliance with the law, that no one goes online and gets copies of what he writes and just uses them anyhow. You also are owners of copyright. First, join these CMOs, be part of these CMOs, but also ensure that you are, the message you are propagating about usage also will be in your interest if you insist that people comply with the law. It is in your interest. Now, him, if he was a freelancer with uh, with Daily Monitor, most likely he'll be the one who owns copyright in the articles that are published. So even in that case, it is in, in his interest that when we are talking about these things, you take note and go and tell the public, use content legally. You are stealing from our writers, you are stealing from us by using content illegally. So it is also up to you. We are not only telling you to comply on one side, but you are also generating this content. And you will benefit when people start paying. Thank you. Thank you, Director.